Hello guys. Well, welcome back to school. Uh, it's time for English. It's time to start a new semester. Uh, the, the third semester, <laughs> but for the first time, probably in your life, it's in the house. And yeah, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be interesting, it's gonna be fun. Uh, in some aspects, in other aspects, maybe not so much. But um, I really do think that this could be a time of growth. It, it could be a good thing. Uh, we learn how to work more on our own. We learn how to be more disciplined in how we learn and what we do. And uh, let's do our best, okay? Let's do our best and, and try to grow and, and be better students and teachers together. Uh, let's, let's review a little bit of a Spy in Siberia. We've been going through this book uh, this year since Christmas and uh, we, we read uh, up to chapter 6. Uh, today I'm just going to review some of, the, some of the answers and some of the words, some of the vocabulary that we've gone through before in, in the activities. So we're going to start with, the, with pages uh, 30 and 31. This is in the activity section of the book which I already gave you. Uh, and number so we have activities two, three, and four. In activities two, uh, the we have one. She was blank, so she only drank half her coffee. This is under number two. Choose the correct answer. The three uh, possible answers are pressed for time, trapped, and secretive. Pressed for time. Pressed for time is when you don't have enough time. You have a due date. You have something else that is going to happen. Uh, you aren't relaxed doing what you're doing. You have to get it done now. Okay? Trapped. Trapped is when you're in a small place, usually a small place, and you can't get out. Okay? Like you trap an animal. Usually you, you, you get animal trapped. Or <laughs> in the house, I feel trapped. I can't get out. Trapped. Uh, secretive. Secretive is secretive. You aren't saying what's really going on or you aren't telling certain people what's going on. Secretive. She was, mm, so she only drank half her coffee. She was pressed for time. Okay? Pressed for time. She didn't have enough time. Uh, number two, the kitchen is on the ground floor and my bedroom is above it. My bedroom is, come on guys, this is so easy. It's upstairs. Upstairs, you have, what's the ground floor? The ground floor is when you, the ground floor, where, where, the, where the door goes into the building. You know, you come from the street, open the door, Go into the building, that's ground floor. Ground floor. And, and sometimes in the elevator or the lift, you can see the letter G for ground floor. So it says, my, the kitchen is on the ground floor. So when you go into the house, if you open the next door, and there's the kitchen. But if you go up the stairs, there's the bedroom. Upstairs. Up. Upstairs. Number three, we mm, the computer because we didn't know the password. We have three words here, forced, searched for, hacked into. Okay, now we, we're using force quite a bit in this book. Um, I think I've read it maybe three times just in these two chapters. Forced is when someone else makes you do something. So maybe in your instance, you're in the house and your mom or your dad say, listen, do the dishes. You don't want to do the dishes, but you're forced to do the dishes. Why? Because they're the boss. <laughs> they said, do the dishes. And so you're forced to do the dishes, even though you don't want to, right? 
or you're forced to watch this video of English. Maybe you don't want to, but school, you have to do it. You're forced to watch the video. Sorry. Uh, search for. Uh, search for is to look for something. I, I need, where, where are my keys? Where are my keys? I don't know where my keys are. I'm looking, I'm looking. Search, look, look. Where is it? Okay, uh, and hack into. Hack into is a very technical term for getting into a computer without permission. Okay, so maybe the computer has passwords, the computer has some sort of a firewall, and you get around the password, or you get around the firewall with some sort of application, software, hacker, stuff. You probably know more about this than me. I'm, I'm not really a hacker. Um, number four, I've, I had nothing to read, so I mm, books from the library. So I had nothing. What, I stepped out? No, what is step out? Well, maybe uh, if we were having normal class, in the school, someone calls me. You no, know? and so I'm I'm giving the class. You know, I'm trying to make you talk. I'm trying to get you excited about English. And you're ignoring me again. But someone calls my phone. You no, know? it's an emergency. Maybe it's my doctor. Maybe it's my mother from America. You no, know? my mother from America. She's calling me. Uh, soon says, Ben, your phone's ringing. I'm like, oh my goodness, or maybe it's Donald Trump. It's Donald Trump! And I grab my phone, and instead of talking on the phone in class, I step out. I step out of class. I go to the hall, and I talk to Donald Trump, and I solve all his problems, and then I come back into the class. Okay, that's stepping out. Uh, borrow. It's prestat. No, I'm going to borrow um, a pencil from Sophia. Okay? And so I take Sophia's pencil, I use it, and then I give it back to Sophia. Borrow. Okay? Had a quick look. A quick look is do 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 and put it down. Not read intensely, it's just skim. Read two pages, I like it, I don't like it, and put it back or take it with me. Um, so what is it? It's borrowed. I borrowed books from the library because I take it, I keep it in my house, and then I bring it back. Borrow. Uh, you can do documents on your computer or on the cloud. The cloud is would be an online storage place like Google Drive. Google Drive is a cloud um, uh, cloud storage for for Apple computers and iPhones. It's I believe it's iCloud stuff like that. Or um, there's other ones too. Those like WeTransfer. Those are cloud systems. Um, you can what store. Well, a store, um, there's different, store could mean different things. Like store, is, it could be a shop where you buy clothes. But this is store squad. Uh, like you store the milk in the fridge. Or you store, store your, store your clothes in the closet. Um, I don't really use it that way though. Store the lemons in the drawer. Store the, the potatoes in the pantry. Okay? Um, turn, turn, you know, turn left, turn right, but we also use it like with a computer, turn on, um, turn documents, you can't like turn a document, you can turn your car, maybe, uh, and then make sure, make sure it is, confirm that it's true or confirm that it gets done. You can store documents. Guardar los documentos. You can store your documents. 
on your computer or on the cloud. Okay, so maybe your or or your mobile phone, maybe your mobile phone doesn't have any more space, no, and so you need to store the video on on Google Drive instead of on your phone so that your phone can receive its WhatsApps and you can keep working. Uh, the student carries number six. The student carries all his books in his. Who's the student? You. You are the student. Carries all his books in his what? In his key. His key. No. Use your key to open the door, not to carry your books. Uh, containers. Containers would be like boxes or parcels. Your backpack. Hello? Backpack. I have a backpack back there somewhere. I think I have a backpack here. Eh. Oh, my backpack. Look at this. Backpack. Hey! Look at that. You can put books in a backpack. Yeah. Put books in a backpack. Okay. So moving on, let's go to number three. Complete the sentences according to the story. Dr. Nielsen couldn't continue with doctors, Dr. Carlson's work because it was password protected and she couldn't hack into the computer. Okay? It was too sophisticated, supposedly. The capsules were used to what? The capsules were used to emit gas into the air and change the, env the environment to change the temperature of the, of the local environment. Um, the GPS coordinates pointed to a specific house. The GPS coordinates pointed to a house. Uh, Fiona went surfing because it was her disguise. What's a disguise? When you wear something or you do something to pretend to be someone else or or to cover up your identity disguise. Uh, Fiona decided that the house was probably safe because no one was coming in and no one was going out. She had cameras put all around the house and there were no people there. So she thought it was probably safe. Um, Fiona was trapped. Remember trapped when you're stuck in a place and you can't get out. Trapped. Fiona was trapped when three large men came in the house. Okay. Uh, number four. An author <coughs> creates suspense, a feeling of tension and curiosity to keep the reader eager to see how the story will develop. How did the author create tension in five chapters five and six? Well, she, th this is a good author. She's creating tension in a variety of ways. Um, just a couple, a couple things that I, I noticed for me was in chapter five, you can see a conversation. Uh, Fiona is talking with Dr. Nielsen and, and, and they're, they're, they're having this conversation. And they're, and they're saying, they're asking questions, they're giving answers. For example, um, it, and, and she's using, she's using vocabulary that, that's exciting. For example, she's like, that's incredible, said Fiona. That's exciting vocabulary. And then when Dr. Nielsen has, a, has an answer, she says, she backs up, she says, why not? It, it, and then, so, so what about this capsule? These are, these are exciting questions. And then, um, she's also using words that create tension. For example, she'll say, Fiona thought about this for a moment. Well, when you say, for a moment, it's, it means like, like right now, and then something else is gonna happen. What does that do? It creates tension, it keeps you reading, because you wanna know what's going to happen after that moment. And then she said, how would it be possible? They're using questions and answers. Maybe someone forced him into it, making the reader think. 
Do I know the answer? Right? Um, she's also using exciting vocabulary. Using exciting things. GPS coordinates. What's more exciting than GPS coordinates? Or computers, or photos, or your mobile phone. She's using, she's using vocabulary and objects that you use every day. So you connect with what she's talking about. Now, uh, in chapter six, she's also using, she's, it, it, it's a bit different because in chapter five, we see just this long conversation between uh, Dr. Nielsen and, uh, and Fiona. But in chapter six, we don't see much of a conversation at all. We just see her thinking and what she's doing. And so we're seeing actions. We're seeing actions one after the other. And, and many times she's using the past simple. Uh, but she's using very exciting vocabulary and she's using connectors that create tension. Um, for example, she's, she's showing intent. She wanted to break into the house. That's intent. So far, no, but what is that? That's a connector, a wonderful connector that's creating tension in the book. Um, later, we'll read about quietly, Fiona went upstairs. Well, she could have said, Fiona walked up the stairs. No, but instead of saying Fiona walked up the stairs, quietly, Fiona went upstairs. That creates drama. Uh, another, another connector, then, well then, that, that's a connector, it creates tension, it creates excitement, suddenly, she was suddenly, like twi twice in a row, suddenly she understood everything, suddenly Fiona heard sounds coming down the stairs, she heard a key turning in the door, very graphic vocabulary, okay, she was trapped. What's more, ten how can you get more tension than that? It's incredible, incredible tension. Okay, um, answer the questions. Write your answers in your notebook. What did Fiona show Dr. Nielsen? I don't know, I do know. The photos, she showed her the photos on her mobile phone. Uh, what did Fiona think Dr. Carlson was forced to do? Heat the environment instead of cooling it, hello? That's why she was seen on top of the mountains. They were getting hot. They were getting really hot. Why didn't Fiona go into the house as soon as she found it? Well, she wanted to be careful. She wanted to, to know what was going on around the house before she went to it. She didn't want to die unnecessarily, no? Um, and she wanted to perfect her disguise, you know, be the surfer girl. You know, kind of throw people off a little bit. Why was the surf hostel the perfect place for Fiona to stay? They didn't ask for her ID. She didn't have to be giving them her passport. She didn't have to be giving her name. They, they were relaxed, they were cool, they were just awesome people, supposedly. Um, well, how did Fiona get into the abandoned house? She used her glass cutter, she cut a hole into the window, totally illegal, don't do that to my house. And what strange thing convinced Fiona that the room was used as a prison? Well, when she went in the room, she found out she couldn't open the door to get out. The, the lock was on the outside, not on the inside. Well, that's a prison because someone outside can lock the door and the person inside can't get out. Classic prison. Okay, very good, we're done. Um, what I want you to do, read the next chapter, okay? Read the next chapter, chapter seven. Fiona runs for her life, super exciting. It's gonna change your world. Um, now we're going to get into your, your book, go back to your book. We are starting a new unit no, just like Fiona, super exciting, fighting crime.
We are going to find all the criminals. We are going to find all the vocabulary. We are going to make this world right again. We're going to fight this crime. We're going to say that crime doesn't pay ever. Um, so uh, vocabulary in the unit is crime, crime reports, uh, grammar, present simple passive, past simple passive. Oh, this is so exciting. And then um, we're going to talk about talking about a crime, explaining words, because sometimes when we're talking to someone, they don't understand what we're saying, then we need to explain what it means and reporting a crime because if you ever go to London and someone steals your phone, like I don't know if that's ever happened to anybody in this class before, well you need to go to the police station and report the crime. You won't get your phone anyway, but at least it's a great experience of using your English and uh, seeing a newspaper report, okay? But first of all, the most basic part is uh, vocabulary, dun, 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 dun. so we have three pictures. We have a picture one, a picture two, and a picture three. Okay? Picture one, two, and three. Now, in number one, it says listen and repeat the words in color below. Then look at the people in the pictures. Who is this? The judge? The witness? or the accused. Whew. Okay, so what's a judge? What's a judge? Um, well, I think a judge is a you no? Know? A judge is a person who decides, oh, you, depends on what it is, okay? Sometimes a judge decides to do one thing or do another thing. Um, many times in, in America, a judge will decide if a police or, or some other person or thing or entity can do something or not, if it's legal or not. Many times a judge will decide that. Um, in many cases for people, the jury, a group of people, will decide if someone is guilty or innocent, but then the judge will decide what the punishment is. The judge will say, you go to jail for one year, or you go to prison for 10 years or you need to pay $100 you need to pay a million dollars okay the judge decides the sentence but then the people decide the jury will decide guilty or not guilty okay um, but that's not in all cases there are certain things that a judge needs to decide um, because he's a judge. <laughs> um, like sometimes a judge will throw out a case. He'll say, this case has no, no, no backing. There's no, there's no case. And he'll throw it out of the court. He'll say, this is a ridiculous court. This is a waste of my time. Um, a witness. A witness is someone who sees a crime. So, you know, Nayara's walking down the street, she sees Jack Black take a purse from Susie, you know, she saw Jack Black's face, she saw Jack Black take the purse, Nayara now can go to the police and say, I saw Jack Black, look, here's the photo, you know. She's the witness, and then in the case when, when they take Jack Black to the judge, then Nayara says, that's Jack Black. I saw him with my eyes take the purse. She's a witness. Okay, um, the accused, well in that case, the accused is this good looking uh, Jack Black. Uh, the person who the people think did the crime. The accused 
is someone they think. They're building the case. They're saying, we think he did it. Or they say, he did it. Or she did it. Just because you're accused doesn't mean you committed the crime. That's a difference. Um, but the accused is the one who has to go before the court and say, we think he did the crime. Okay? So obviously number one, what is number one? Number one is the accused. The accused. We think he did the crime. Uh, number two is the judge. Okay? Sometimes he makes decisions. Sometimes he decides the sentence. He'll say, if you're going to go to jail for one year, for five years, for ten years, for twenty years, that's the judge. Okay? And then in number three, we have the person with the finger pointing. He says, that's the man. Well, what is that? That is the witness. Okay. Well, in the time we have left, let's look at some of these things here. Uh, repeat the words below. Innocent. Innocent. Scene of the crime. Scene of the crime. Identify. Identify. Hooligans. Hooligans. Find you guilty. Find you guilty. Committed a serious crime. Committed a serious crime. Riots. Breaking into. Causing damage. Obey the law. Trial. Prison sentence. Warning and break the law. Now what I want you to do is I want you to play around with some of this vocabulary in your interactive student book. Okay, in your interactive student book, you will have this vocabulary and you can, you know, listen to it, find the definition, maybe find a game, and, and play around with this vocabulary. Okay? Now, let's, uh, let's do this activity. It says, who says the following? The judge, the witness, or the accused? A. It wasn't me. I am innocent. I wasn't even at the scene of the crime. It wasn't me. Who is that? It's the accused. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. Everybody says that. You go to a jail. Have you ever visited a prison? Everyone's innocent in the prison. Everyone says they're innocent. It's incredible. Okay, B. I can definitely identify, identify, he's the man, identify that man. He's one of the hooligans. Hooligan is a crazy person who's always for damaging things. I can identify that man. That's the witness. The jury, numbers, letter C. The jury finds you guilty. You have committed a serious crime. That's the judge. That's the judge saying, the jury decided you're guilty, you did wrong, you broke the law, and then he has to decide on the sentence. D, the riots were very frightening. The people break into shops, causing damage everywhere. That's because they're hooligans. That's what hooligans do. Um, the uh, that would be the witness. He's explaining what was going on. E. I always obey the law. This trial is totally unfair. That's the accused. He's defending himself. Um, and then F. I'm giving you a prison sentence. This will also be a warning to others not to break the law. Oh, that's the judge. He's giving his decision. He's giving his sentence. He's saying, don't do it again, and I'm going to make sure you don't do it again. So, anyway, play around with it in your intro to book, and we'll see you next week. Remember to read your chapter in the book. Okay, goodbye.